Hey guys, Lathead here. So I've been working on an OBD simulator uh, so that I can get my car to speak to some of the iPad apps which do OBD stats. The problem I have is that my car doesn't speak the standard ISO uh, OBD protocols, so the off-the-shelf devices like the PLX Wi-Fi and the Innovate Motorsports OT2 uh, don't work. But uh, you can, can speak the Mitsubishi protocol to it, which products like EvoScan do, but there isn't, at least as yet, EvoScan for iPad. So I've been working on a device that will translate from the Mitsubishi protocol to the Elm 327 protocol so that you can use it with pretty much any anything compatible with the Elm 327, which is pretty much everything. Uh, so I finally got it working, so just a little demo. So um, I based it on the OBD Sim software. Um, this is written by uh, this guy here, Gary, I'm guessing. Um, so I used his simulator as a base, which made things really good, but it wasn't quite complete. I've had to make quite a few little uh, changes and that sort of thing uh, to get everything working. Um, but I've got it here, so I'll fire up. Uh, first, I need Certinet because the um, the iPad application, like Dash Command and Rev, they use Certinet. Like, well, they, they connect on a TCP port 35,000, whereas the OBD simulator simulates a serial port. So you can see here, I've fired up Certinet. And here's the command for the simulator, so I'll just fire that up. You can see that it starts up with a serial port and it gets started. So what we'll do now is we'll come over to the iPad and uh, this is Dash Command. It's a pretty expensive app, about 50 bucks, but um, I decided to buy it. Uh, there's a, a free one called Rev, but it won't show you any of the OBD sort of gauges and statistics, uh, so you can't actually buy it, but again, it's about a $40, $50 application. But uh, So we'll just hit the connection button here and you'll see uh, on the uh, iPad on the Mac that the simulator has done all sorts of stuff so when it first connected if I scroll up far enough you can see it's enabling echo, checking the version and uh, does a whole bunch of sort of setup and then you'll see a whole bunch of these repeating things where it's just fetching data values so if we come back to the iPad and we hit on uh, dashboards here you'll actually see uh, a whole range of values changing now the simulator is just generating random values so they're all over the shop come over here you can see my speeds going up and down all over the place but the important thing is it's consistently chatting to the simulator and getting values. So this is great because this is what I needed. I had a lot of trouble initially getting the protocol to work speaking to dash command. If I didn't send the right thing, it would just disconnect and I had no idea what to do right. Um, but actually the guys at uh, Palmer Engineering which create dash command are actually very responsive with uh, some emails, very surprisingly, um, in helping me getting this going. So between them, uh, between getting some dumps with the working version, uh, thanks to my housemate, and for other bits and pieces, I finally got a, uh, a, a working version. So now I can work on, uh, this is written in C++, but what I want to do is uh, simulate a TCP dump in the background there. Uh, what I'd like to get working is a hardware version with like an AVR or something, so I can just have it in the car without a real PC kind of thing. Um, that would be the best, so I'll have to sort of re-implement an emulator in, uh, in, in on the embedded platform for the AVR, but importantly now, you know, I've got the protocol sussed out, I know what sort of data to return to dash command and to make it happy. So uh, that's just a little preview, I've got that working now, so I'll, uh, I'll get working on the rest of it. So um, if you're interested in what sort of cars would need this, I've got a Mitsubishi Legnum VR4 at the moment. Um, previously I had a Mitsubishi Magna, but it was exactly the same, where it would only speak the um, the ISO protocols. Looks like it's crashed out or timed out or something. Uh, it ran for quite a while, might have to... Might have to work on that, it seems to be frozen. But uh, yeah, so my Mitsubishi Magna had the same problem, and I'm led to believe some of the earlier Evos have that problem as well, but it seems like maybe they don't, so I'm a little bit unsure about which Evos may or may not work. Uh, but for those with uh, like a VR4 or a Magna, this could be uh, pretty good, so hopefully uh, in the next month or two, I'll get some more work done. Alright, cheers guys.